So I hope you all had a good lunch. <laughs> um, you're full, satisfied, um, and uh, curious about the next um, presentations. Three presentations. I'm not sure. I think only the second presentation presenter I didn't see yet. Um, but uh, we're going to start uh, with Stefan talking about challenges in geo names and address extraction. Thank you very much. Konnichiwa. Sound okay? Is this okay? I, I have to take it? Better? Okay. So, my name is Stefan Keller. Nice to meet you. Nice to be here. And uh, my rough agenda is about your names and addresses. I first want to start about the motivation, um, why um, I want to talk about these two issues and uh, objects, domains, and then I first uh, dive into geo names, geographical names, and then going to addresses, postal addresses, and uh, then talking about uh, some issues in capturing them and um, processing those uh, open seat map objects. So geoname search um, is, for example, when you ask, where is Aizu Wakamatsu? And address geocoding is when you have such an address, like here, Tokyo Central Post Office, and then you have 5-3, Yaizu, one, Kome, and, and some others, and want to uh, go there. And that's called geocoding. So given a building address, you look for some coordinate in the second uh, case. And in the first case, the geoname search case, um, you look for Aizu Wakamatsu. And you expect a coordinate or a bounding box. So both is kind of geocoding. And uh, so my definition, my categorization, categorization is that the first geoname search is a rough, a rough geocoding. So given a geographical name, you want to look for the, uh, for the position, for the spatial position. And the second, the address geocoding, the building address geocoding, that's uh, the fine-grained um, geocoding. Coarse-grained, fine-grained. And both share some attributes, some properties, and issues. So, uh, and then to focus once more on what I'm speaking about is that I'm not speaking about geographical search engine software. <laughs> you know, there is Lucene, there is Solar, there is uh, there are some some other kind of uh, famous. Um, search engine software, uh, Sphinx is some software, Google search front end is such a software. I'm not talking about the search engine software at the bottom. Um, and still, and I'd, I'd like to explain shortly what this is all about. I'm uh, a little bit talking about data pre-processing in the middle, data pre-processing software which took the OpenStreetMap data you provided and processes it into some dedicated file which contains geonames and building addresses. In fact, if I talk of these two, um, there are two files uh, as the target, as the outcome of the data pre-processing software process. The main target are just geonames and the bounding box or a coordinate, and then there is uh, and an ID, so for example, a, um, a street or um, a castle, which has a castle, um, like the castle around, which has a coordinate, and that's one file, and then an ID, an old street map ID, and then there is a second, second file, database set, if you want, as the result at the very right of the middle data pre-processing um, software process. A second file which has the buildings 
uh, with their address, but without street name or location, just pointing with an awesome ID to the main file. So I'm talking about the main file uh, as the output, and uh, an additional file serves in a one-to-many relationship, many buildings relating to one address, I mean uh, to one street usually, or block in Japan. Um, and here I'm talking more, speci more specifically now about how to get to this data and how you will uh, become perhaps a little bit more aware um, of how to enter and how to map the open seed map data. So I'm talking about uh, finally how you enter the data because this <coughs> needs to be pre-processed before it's going to be fed into the search engine software on the bottom. The example I'm showing are exam examples with ha which have a front end, but this is just uh, for the sake of an example. So I'm starting first uh, to talk about geonames uh, and uh, in fact which contain some hierarchy. And uh, also you only enter um, I see, uh, the Aisu Wakamatsu castle, you enter it with a coordinate, you implicitly enter, uh, you, we implicitly can calculate a hierarchy in which county, in which city, sorry, in which city, in which state, in which country Aisu Wakamatsu Castle, for example, is. So, um, another example is Aisu Wakamatsu. When you look for it in OpenStreetMap, you will get this uh, kind of result. Those who know, uh, and, and that's somehow a relation, uh, mainly consisting of a polygon, uh, optionally, because it's such an important administration. Uh, it's at admin level, it's um, indicating admin level seven. It's an important administration boundary. It also has a coordinate node of the city center of ISU. Wakamatsu, but mainly if you look for Aizu Wakamatsu, you expect a bounding box which lets you center um, on OpenStreetMap on this area. And uh, that's the process of geoname search. And uh, that's the, um, the, the data you, en you enter and which now is being processed hierarchically um, in order to say um, it's in Japan. So let's keep in mind, it's not indicating that it is in Japan. It's just uh, the data you entered, uh, somebody entered, um, a Russian guy for a, a year ago, probably entered. Um, it, it was just the boundary and at least uh, the type boundary administrative. It entered some uh, attributes. It entered the English name, the Japanese name, and that's all he entered. So um, that's that data you enter, and that's what I'm talking about and what's behind this. Um, the search engine behind OpenStreetMap, uh, it's Nominatim, uh, which you can uh, query uh, separately. And there you see, once again, on the left upper side, the pure data entered by a mapper. And then you see, at the lower end of the slide, the address. So Aiki Wakamatsu um, is a relation boundary, it's a, it's a boundary, and it has this English name. And then you see it, uh, its hierarchy, um, which is going up to Japan. Um, there is another project which I invented uh, some time ago, which is now somehow maturing. Uh, maturing. Uh, the website is, is called OpenStreetMapNames.org. Um, that's only a front end, only a, uh, somehow the gallery of showing the data because this project is mainly all about the data processing, uh, the process data extracted from OpenStreetMap, which is ready for geoname search and ready for address and geocoding. So if you enter Aizu Wakamatsu, um, it gives you again the bounding box and um, the process data 
which uh, you don't see actually uh, it's a little bit smaller font to the um, down right and uh, this is the output of the data process where we take on seed map data with a clear license and we extract chair names as the main file and addresses as the secondary file now this is not the address file this is just the chair name file which you, you see and these days we released the address file as a secondary file as a new release this is the one you see when you look at, uh, <coughs> at osm.names.org and when you um, uh, search for Aizu Wakamatsu. Um, I slightly modified it so you see the local name, which I can't um, spell, you know, the name in, the Jap in Japanese characters, which is the, 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 the main name. Then there are alternative names collected by other languages. And in fact, only two, I'll come back to this. It uh, seems to be Roman uh, English and uh, Russian. I'm not, not sure, but I, I think it could be Russian, an alternative name. Just collected, extracted out of old seed map data and other data. There's, it's not a street, it's just um, an, an empty enter, uh, entry. Uh, it's a county, um, Fukushima. I mean, that's a standardized name in our scheme. In fact, it's not called a county in Japanese, I, in Japan, I know, but uh, we have some standard database scheme which mentions street, county, city, state, country, and then uh, Japan, then it stops. There are even country codes and other metadata around this. Then you see the bounding box in road geographic coordinates and the OpenStreetMap ID it should be the same, 41, starting with 41. You see um, the, that must be the name of the relation, um, starting with 41. You see on top of the URL of the web address. And um, it's of type administrative boundary, and there is some ranking. And that's another kind of magic behind a geographic name search. So once again, the hierarchy is, is very important. Uh, so, and that's all uh, derived from OpenStreetMap. So starting uh, with the country, which is the highest level you usually uh, we derive, which is Japan, the national level. Um, eventually, it's only the mainland you mean by country, um, but uh, it's the country level. Then you have second, the state level, city level, then county, town level, and the fifth hierarchy, hierarchy is, is village, suburb, and neighborhood level, uh, level so uh, sub, sub uh, town level. These are all administrative divisions, and they are all polygons. Um, and if they are not, we have a uh, first issue. But since they are polygons, you can calculate the hierarchy and attach it to Aizu Wakamatsu. That's what's, uh, what took place when Nomina team calculated all the address, address uh, information uh, on the bottom of the slide out of the data. So another, another important thing to mention besides hierarchical information attached to one simple coordinate or bounding box um, or polygon, one important thing is what's a name anyway? So what's, what's this kind of unspeakable Japanese, which is the local name, you expect um, some, of course, the English name and even the Russian name and others. So the, this one, um, do I have a pointer <coughs> or something? Some, some cursor? One, two, one second. I'm somehow, so, okay. so the uh, local name, that's um, this one. The first one. That's an endonym because locals, uh, locals uh, call it. Oh, thank you very much. So that's the local one, and that's called the endonym because locals call it officially like this. And in um, in Japanese, it's repeated, but in uh, but uh, indicated that this is Japanese, and that's the in the Roman characters. Uh, the official name, and then 
there, there is also something like, um, that's now for the castle, I, I'm sorry. I just realized now, reading the English, that's not for the, 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 city, the, the city, that's for the castle. The English uh, name of the castle is Aizu Wakamatsu Castle, which is the endonym, so how Englishmen call the, um, the Aizu, uh, Aizu Wakamatsu Castle. Then there is even an alternative name to the Aizu Wakamatsu Castle, um, which is Tsuruga, and how they uh, want to call it alternatively um, uh, in English. And of course, uh, so uh, in Japanese letters, the very bottom. So there are uh, many um, alternate names where uh, people expect to find this castle when they type in Tsuruga castle. They expect that it will be found. So another problem is that uh, we don't expect in OpenStreetMap 196 alternative names. Um, that would be, that's not the goal of OpenStreetMap. So that's the reason why um, uh, Nomina team and, uh, and also OpenStreetMap names and also Mapbox, for example, they take Wikidata um, and uh, try to match the name and uh, add uh, other um, names from other countries of the same, uh, other endonyms, sorry, other exonyms um, of the same place in order that, that you can query Aizu Wakamatsu even in Russian or in South Korean. Issues in tagging geonames are that uh, people think name is like um, a, a remark section, a remark attribute, which is, or some descriptive thing. It is not, you even should avoid the name castle because uh, when, 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 when giving this as an example, in fact, it's already of type castle, so you should not add the name castle um, with some exce exceptions, uh, only if it's re really officially named um, something like hotel. So uh, also for hotels, you should not add the name hotel. Um, it's just the name of the hotel, Washington, Ho Washington, and then you say it's a hotel. So a name is just a name only. That's how the wiki of OpenStreetMap also advises. Another issue is how to rank geonames. If you zoom out, you expect the more important uh, cities uh, to, be, uh, to remain on the map and, and not very small places. And uh, ranking is very hard issue to calculate the ranking of some place. So you help by, um, by adding some uh, things like the correct administrative level and by you help also by um, adding the Wikidata um, entry to Aizu Wakamatsu in order to le look up at Wikidata how many, how large the population is and because, and, and, uh, because of this additional information data processing software can derive the ranking, the importance of Aizu Wakamatsu. When you, add, when you know how many people are living nearby, uh, living in this city. Third, the admin level, the, there is no international um, consensus, but uh, neither in OpenStreetMap. And the a very hard part is for urban areas to get the right administrative level, which goes from one to 10. And one is never used, that's supernatural level. It's, a, it's country level two down to neighborhood level 10. And between seven, eight, nine, and 10, there is no agreement in, in OpenStreetMap, and that should become better in the near future in order to de derive the right administrative level because it can happen that Aizu Wakamatsu is uh, attached straight to Japan or to Fukushima. Even there is sometime, perhaps another level in between. Lastly, um, often these sub, um, sub uh, city levels, um, they exist, but only as a node, as a, as a uh, point feature, but uh, people know um, it's known as an aerial place. 
So objects of larger aerial extent, which are captured only as a, as a node because perhaps the, the boundary is not known, they still um, should have some information how large the extent is. Is it 100 meters um, for the, say, the Tour of Eiffel? Um, it's also a place. Um, so it's about, uh, perhaps one kilometer, or is it 10 kilometers or something in order to get the correct bounding box in order to zoom in at the right place if you enter Tour of Eiffel, the uh, Eiffel, um, the, the famous Eiffel Tomb of Paris. <coughs> now, turning to addresses, um, postal addresses, not only for writing a letter, so um, my emphasis is not about zip code or postal codes, it's, uh, it's a building number which is the most uh, important thing inter uh, internationally. So it's about building addresses. Given uh, a list of uh, street geonames, so in the process I explained before, I um, accounted, I took street as part of, the, of a geoname. In fact, often streets take over the name of places and vice versa. So in this uh, technical process, streets are considered geographic names. They get their proper hierarchy and everything else pre-processed uh, given at this stage. Now, given the street names with their hierarchy and uh, their ranking and things like this, uh, the goal of the second part of the process uh, in order to get, to get uh, the, the correct addresses is get all objects which, um, which have an adverb house number on it. And there in OpenStreetMap, the, the so-called Karlsruhe schema um, has been adopted. Um, and uh, it's all starting with ADDR as the main <coughs> key, as the key name. So, um, what we can assume, we now focus only on all objects having other house number. The goal is now to, sec to generate this uh, so uh, somehow secondary um, file, I call file, which is the address, a building address file. This building address file has n not a coordinate on it, it has the awesome ID which links this building, a specific building like this uh, culture center, um, it links this to some address uh, by saying which OSM ID um, is uh, related to the other geoname, which then has all the hierarchy uh, attached to it and pre-processed. The Cosmo schema says uh, an address can, an other key, uh, either house number key, can be added to a node, which is the most common way, mo I think, it can be an isolated node, or it can be an other an, 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 an attribute um, when you add a shop. It can be second, it can be a, a node on top of a building boundary with the tag entrance equals yes, to indicate where the entrance is, which is actually very important. How to find the entrance of this building wasn't that easy if I'm entering from the other side and the emergency uh, facilities and organizations are very keen to know where the entrance is. In fact, that's uh, a, a rather complicated thing to process, by the way. The third one uh, is a node. Uh, it's a node on a polygon, inside the polygon, uh, physically, I mean spatially inside the polygon, um, where the, poly the polygon has a um, building key. Uh, uh, that's also very common. The second common besides uh, the uh, isolated node. The, fo the, the fourth one is a node on a polygon representing the perimeter of a site. The second last one is it's on a relation that's not so common. And finally, it's also possible to have one um, virtual invisible way where, with the tag interpolation where you say uh, starting by uh, house number two up to house number two, 20, um, you can interpolate two, four, uh, house number six, eight, ten, and so forth. That's um, also sometimes in some cities very common. Most common are number one and three, I think, out of my heart. 
So um, option which options are there to relate uh, a house number to a street from a data processing point of view? So what you've done so far, hopefully correctly, is choose one of those to add a house number. That's what you do. And now the data processing comes in, which is something of my interest to explain to you the problems and how this works. Because the only, the, the minimal thing you have to enter is just the house number. Uh, I mean, that's the very minimal thing. And probably the street name, um, other street or other place. So the ma majority is you enter other house number in any uh, options like, like there and other street as a name. And that's all you enter. Now, um, the computer processing process comes in and it takes several approaches. And that's almost, uh, I'm explaining now somehow the basic principle um, of how nomina team works and also osmnames.org, which is some, somehow like a derivative of this nice project nomina team. So first, uh, the house numbers um, are um, the, the easiest one from a computational uh, point of view is when there is a relation. Uh, I switch back. So um, for, for this option, the uh, relationship um, option, where is it? Uh, second last one, that's the easiest one to process because it's some, somehow a direct relationship. Um, the relation points directly to the house number and to the street name. So we have a direct match without any search. It's uh, the easiest one to process. The second, um, second and easiest one is um, do, does the attribute street or alternatively place <coughs> exist in the surrounding? And uh, if they match directly, I, I mean, uh, is the string match uh, or 100% match, then that's uh, about 80% which match. And now, after having done, um, the, uh, the remainder is the more hard stuff. Um, sometimes, uh, if people add street as a name into the string, but, uh, uh, but uh, in fact, it's only the street, that's already a problem because um, blah, blah, street and blah, blah does not match because of the street. So for a, um, a dump uh, a match, uh, a string match algorithm, that's already a problem. Somehow how to find out that, uh, that there is a partial match. And so if there are only few uh, things to replace, uh, if there is a close match, we can catch another 15%. So we are about um, up to 89%, 85% of all existing house, house numbers um, where we can attach a street name, which means we, we can get the full address uh, to say in which city the street exists and, in, uh, and so on. And the fourth step is apply street proximity search, a spatial search. If there is no attribute street nor place, um, which is uh, an expensive co computation, but well known, I mean, uh, thanks to databases like Postgres, PostGIS, we can do this, but um, it takes quite some time. So in fact, the whole process, you have to expect that uh, this takes about two days for the whole, for the whole world to process. Um, on a strong computer, I mean on a computer with about 32 gigabyte memory, not, not just um, a small map, uh, map, um, laptop. I have with me. So that's all uh, for the process. And what I didn't cover, but still are usually processed, there are ways with interpolation, there are nodes with associated streets, there are also clever things you can do if point of interest have no address, but are sitting inside the building boundary. And so you can derive and assume that the shop uh, uh, also gets the uh, address of the um, building, of course, because it's spatially inside the building. That's a cheap process, but still needs some computation. What I, what I also don't uh, uh, tell you, didn't tell you, um, if there are zip codes added, uh, we carry these along and uh, we keep them, of course. 
Now the issues are about the following um, in re regarding to tagging addresses. If you don't, uh, if you have adder street not spelled in the correct uh, way, there it, we have a problem. And, uh, and, and this is a, a very uh, annoying because the mapper could check the name of the street and align it, and that's very important. To, so take care how you add the street name. Then um, I leave the second one out. The third one is our nodes um, with entrance. Yes, sitting on top of a building um, is a, in fact a double indirection, which is computationally very expensive. So if this is the node, and if uh, my presentation uh, table now is the, is the building, and this is entrance equals yes, that's a separate object. So we, we have an address, uh, a house number, and uh, we have a street attached the, on it, but it's a node. Now, uh, it's supposed to sit on the, on the um, way, on the boundary, so we first have to make a spatial, um, somehow join, a spatial to, to join this node, node um, to the way. And then we have the, that's the first indirection, the first resolution, uh, the first match we have to relate this node to the building. And then uh, we have the building um, which uh, now knows the address. And then we have everything inside, which is the second indirection where we can um, attach the correct address. So when, when, you, you, when you have, that's often in large buildings, um, and it's nice to do uh, to, because then you know the entrance, but it's computationally very extensive, but uh, that's not your fault. So that's not an issue. It's only a, uh, for mappers. It's only an issue probably uh, for, uh, for the computer. In fact, Nomina team even uh, really does not um, resolve this issue uh, as far as I know. Also, it, also I recommend uh, to have entrance yes to indicate the entrance, but um, nomina, nomina team then will not uh, attach addresses to shops inside these buildings. Finally, um, nodes um, in Europe, we often have some uh, set of buildings which have only one postal entry, so we somehow say it's house number one and three and five at this street that's convenient for a mapper, but very inconvenient to process. And I, I would like to, to um, um, uh, say that you restrain from entering these, uh, if you can, and enter three house number nodes instead of this. So the message is to go, and that's uh, almost my last slide for, for today. So uh, addresses are an important asset, an important data set of all the seed map and of geographical information science, science um, in general. Just uh, to remind, um, those are the ones you usually expect to buy and to pay uh, quite some money um, from commercial companies when you want to have addresses. In fact, another indication is that free geocoders change almost every month, uh, and, and the, except nominal team, which remained available since years. But um, I tried to keep uh, pace, the pace and uh, to, to have um, a list of free geocoders. And uh, in fact, they change, uh, I mean the free ones at least, um, and change every other month uh, their um, paying plan, their price plan, um, and even Microsoft and Google change their uh, commercial plan how to access the, those addresses. So it's really one of uh, the few um, of the categories of, of, of spatial data which are very important. Geonames, I mean, not the house numbers, are also very important because there you can locate tweets and some, somebody says, I'm in the city hall um, uh, or the uh, cultural center uh, in Aizu, and uh, you leave out Wakamatsu, 
you still expect somehow this could be in Japan, and that's uh, the power of geonames. My wish list, um, as I indicated through my issues, are uh, that, you, that mappers uh, are assigning more consistently administrative levels seven to nine, six, seven to nine, then, then they are, and then that they are more consistent of uh, assigning names, street names, um, or house names. And uh, I want to launch a discussion um, of how to map geonames of larger aerial extent with fuzzy boundaries. Um, and so uh, in order to attach them the correct rank and the correct bounding box, which is important for geocoding geonames. So now the stage is open for discussion. If there are, there is some time left. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, too. Um, actually, no time for discussion, uh, but there are another two days where Stefan is around all the time. And 